my name is Audun Winger, and I'm uh, the editor of the magazine Windua. And we're here to talk about uh, a book written by a man who is sitting here. His name is Simon Reynolds. He's been one of the most important writers about uh, music in general, you can say, for uh, two decades now. But your latest book, Retromania, yeah. Pop Culture's Addiction to Its Own Past, has touched on something uh, in our time. Yeah, yeah, I've had some uh, unfriendly reactions from people. Um, so basic, basically you're traveling around the world talking about uh, that it was better before. Uh, well, that's what some people say, yeah. Um, uh, yeah the people who don't like this book say um, he's, getting, uh, he's, he's getting old. He's old. This is, uh, uh, I'm talking about how things have changed the last 10, 12 years, is that um, there wasn't anything like, like a big movement on the scale of, of, of rap or, or rave or, um, you know, or, or definitely not punk, uh, you know, where it's like a whole new cultural formation, you know, it's not just, um, it's a new music, but it's also uh, new attitudes, new clothes, new, you know, a, a new worldview, really. And um, uh, the last one that was like like a wholesale movement like that, I think, was Rave, and it first emerged. But don't you think the dubstep guys yeah, yeah. But believe that, that but they're doing something new? Um, some, I think some of them do, but there's also an awful lot of, um, I think, you know, Objectively speaking, dubstep is very much, it's still like an extension of what started in the 90s and especially early on in the early sort of what people think of as the prime of dubstep, it was very much bound up with sort of we're carrying on jungle. You know, it was very much like things like, you know, playing dub plates and rewinds and all these jungle rituals, you know, um, and almost in a kind of slightly scholarly, historical, you know, very history-minded kind of way. Um, but how would you describe the music of Skrillex, one of the major artists of our era? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not really my bag, to be honest. But uh, I kind of ad ad admire, I sort of, uh, uh, ad in some odd way, admire the fact that it exists and it drives people crazy, you know. Uh, uh, but, you know, I suppose you could say the same for all kinds of rubbish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, but you know, there's something. There's something. There is something. You know, I saw the Grammys uh, the other day, and and I, uh, it was you know kind of cool. Dead mouse make, making these weird sounds, these sort of wobbly bass lines that are all kind of really baroque and twisted. Um, in that sort of context, it was kind of pretty exciting. He's, he's awf awfully fond of the takeoff musically. It's, relax. It, the takeoff. Yeah. How do you how do you mean? <coughs> like the climax. Yeah. It's, it's a series of climaxes. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit wearing. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's, not, it's not deep music, you know, like, you know, but I think the. It was there's a place your day. There's a, there's, a, there's a place for, a, uh, for that kind of shallow, unearned euphoria, I think. You know, this sort of, uh, ref you know, Pavlovian reflex type effects in music. Like you know, so many people are doing like house music again, you know, like sort of, and that's like a style of music that's been around for 25 years. You know. But house music is it is folk music now. Yeah, something you play for your children to make them sleep at night. Yeah, and or to wake <laughs> up. But talking about Skrillex, his latest EP will bring us back to your book Retromania because on his EP he's doing a thing with the Doors. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's something. Uh, there's actually a, f a funny little mini. You could make a mini, a little mini tradition of um, uh, of the Doors and dance music. There are various classic rave tracks that sample Jim Morrison. Um, this guy called Asen did a track called uh, "Close Your Eyes" that samples from uh, "Celebration of the Lizard." All this stuff about uh, go insane, close your mind, all this kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, Fatboy Slim did a thing sampling some Jim Morrison poetry. Uh, he did a track called Bird of Prey that samples uh, one of those sort of poems that was on American Prayer. And, uh, you know, there's certainly, um, you know, the whole idea of uh, that sort of apocalyptic thing the Doors mm -hmm. had has a certain fit with dance music. and It's a continuation. Yeah. 
we can I can look in the content uh, page of your book so, uh, because this retromania thing it's it's a disease. How would you describe this disease? Uh, the various stages of the <laughs> did, I, did did I did I say that? No, I'm oh, saying. Okay. <laughs> I have a pun. I have a pun. I have a pun where I say something like retro, you know, uh, the retrovirus. Uh, some hostile reviewer used this, you know, it was just a, a section heading. Used this as proof that the book is full of a, a discourse of uh, decay and, and disease and rot and whatever. And I was like, at this various points in the book, I actually use words like decadence, you know. When you start talking about decadence, you are positing an earlier period when people were less. Uh, less ironical, less knowing, less sort of sophisticated, less um, tangled up in, in knowledge and reference and, um, and less, less civilized, basically. We can talk a little about, about the revival industry. Last week I <coughs> did a really decadent thing. I paid 600 Norwegian kroner to see a band called The Musical Box, who right. tours and that they play uh, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway by Genesis. <laughs> Uh, but not the album, the live version. Oh, right. Uh, with the same type of talking between the songs. Yeah. Peter Gabriel <laughs> did. And they actually have this, the same setup. Right. And they also have uh, inherited the, the film, the original film that Genesis used. Right. During that tour. And they look like them as well. And they play <laughs> better. Did you enjoy it? It was uh, a, f a freaky experience. Because right. it was obviously well played. And right. all the Genesis fans in the house was they got a yeah. trumpet crop, as we call it in uh, well, in Lillehammer. Yeah, and the, Gen the Genesis people they have uh, put their OK stamp on it. So did they? they? Right. So I guess the, uh, they're the continuation of that band. I like the idea of rock retro as being a bit like classical, you know, becoming a cla form of classical music. But there's a big difference, I think, because um, you know classical music is based around repertory and you know it's different orchestras taking this the you know the score and doing their version of it and um in rock music that doesn't work because you know you, you don't you know you, you really want to see the original band i think most people want to see the original band doing that because so much of what rock music is is not the, the score it's you know the it's the grain of uh mick jagger's voice you know or and it's um it's the physical presence of the stars as well, you know. Yeah, but the funny thing about this band, I, I think there exists like a 100 Genesis cover bands who are musically... Well, that's even more, then that yeah. is really like classical music, because, yeah. you know, any given point, all around the world, orchestras are doing Beethoven and, and uh, the planets, and, you know, there, there are different versions going on. Same with plays as well, yeah. I suppose. There are plays that are being, you know, certain plays are being done simultaneously mm -hmm. all around the world, aren't they? But if you play in a tribute band, uh, let's say a, a Genesis tribute band. You should follow their. You should start with their early period and just move on from theirs. <laughs> and you have to fire some of them, band <laughs> members, and <laughs> cut your hair and, st and stop drumming and go right, in front yes. of the stage, like a re repetition of the of the band's yeah. career. They should have a festival. Suddenly, you got a long beard for, for a couple of years and. Uh, they could, have a fest they could have a festival of all the Genesis tribute bands and each one of them could do a different era. One will survive. And you could just see the whole of the Genesis arc <laughs> in one day. You know, it would be, be like time-lapse photography of a band. You know, uh, Suddenly the 80s MIDI sound comes in. And <laughs> I think this, uh, this is a... Uh, There's endless possibilities. Yeah.